our multi skill tonight, he is our keynote speaker. So we're honoured to have him. Please give him a very warm welcome to our brother Ajmal Masroor. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you very much for inviting me, and thank you very much for bearing with the proceedings this evening, and thank you to Rahim Jang for such an elaborate introduction. May I begin by greeting you all with the Islamic greeting Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I've been asked to speak on behalf of you and in outlining a vision for a mosque. What should a mosque look like? And what should a mosque do? And how should we build a relationship with the mosque subsequently. I would like to give you a vision for a mosque for our country, Britain, in which not only do we live, but our ancestors have lived for many, many years. May I begin by reminding you that mosque building in this country did not begin with the Hayes Muslim Center. It will not end with the completion of your mosque either. It began a long time ago. I have a very loud voice, Brother Salim. So if people can't hear me, then there is a problem. Can you hear me? Yes. Exactly. Who said that? Thank you. People should hear me, inshallah. I'm a trustee of a mosque. And I tell you, I don't like being trustee of anything. Because it's a burden that one should be very fearful of. But a mosque that is very close to my heart, a group of people who came and roped me into it. I'm the trustee of, one of the trustees, of Abdullah Quilliam Mosque, the first mosque of Britain. And it is based in Liverpool. It was built by a white man. And I say white man respectfully, not racially. A native white English Liverpudlian who converted to Islam and built the first mosque in 1891 or 1889, whichever date you follow. Ladies and gentlemen, if you were to begin the building of masajids in this country from 1889, we've come a long way. In 1889, there were no other mosques in this country. Today, by the grace of Allah, guess how many mosques we have? Not one, of course. Not even a hundred. In fact, not even five hundred. Not even a thousand. Not even fifteen hundred. By the grace of Allah, and by the immense hard work of our elder generation, and I note, our elder generation, our uncles, our parents who came here, we now have more than 2,000 masajid, subhanAllah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. We should praise and thank him for enabling us to build so many masajids in this country. Up and down the country. Even if you take a wrong turning in London, you end up in a mosque. I tell you, this has happened to, many, to me many times. I'm looking for a place. I've taken the wrong turning. Allahu Akbar, where did this mosque come from? It wasn't here five, five years ago, two years ago. Alhamdulillah is a great ni'mah, great sign of a good future. Mosques, ladies and gentlemen, indicates your permanency in the country and in the land in which you live. You're no longer temporary here. When you put down a mosque, when you lay down the foundation, you don't say to the world, I'm here for two days. No, you say to the world, I'm here for a long time. I'm not going anywhere. That's what you say. But our, our parents didn't say that consciously. They kept two, both of their feet, one in their, their respective countries and one in this country. 
And yet they did 2,000 masajids in that state. For those of us who have both of our feet in one country, we should be able to double that very quickly. I'm talking about our generation. Ladies and gentlemen, our beloved Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he built a masjid as soon as he arrived in Medina, seeking asylum. Look, seeking asylum, asylum seekers, I've got good news for you. You're following the sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let no one discourage you. Let no one tell you you're an asylum seeker. Tell him, Alhamdulillah, I'm an asylum seeker. In fact, I am an asylum seeker too. I'm a refugee. We're all refugees on this house. And the first thing as Muslims we do is we build a mosque. First thing we do. And that's exactly what our parents did. Ladies and gentlemen, a mosque is a place of connection. Connecting humanity with Allah, the fashioner, the designer, of the entire universe, connecting you and me with one another, connecting us with our environment. That connection is found by a mosque, established by a mosque, rooted by a mosque. <coughs> Without it, you won't find any connections. When I go to my local masjid to pray, there is an extraordinary feeling of brotherhood, sisterhood, calmness, tranquility that prevails amongst even the warring parties in a mosque. SubhanAllah. Even if they disagree, even if they don't sit next to one another, when it comes to the Imam saying, Allahu Akbar, they all run together, stand next to one another. You're not coming to the mosque after hearing the Iqamah and you see your enemy standing there. Okay, I'm not going to stand next to him. You never do that. You go and stand even to the person that you disagree with. You stand next to them and you pray because time has come to forget about the world. Forget about the enmity. Forget about your arguments and your squabbles. Forget about your worldly interests, but to focus on Allah. Because you've just said, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You've just fastened your hand. You see, Rasulullah said, when you say Allahu Akbar, by the, by the takbir that you give, you enter a state of purity. And you leave the state of purity by saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You're greeting even your enemy. May Allah's peace be on you. You're greeting your friend. May Allah's peace be on you. You enter a state of purity by saying, Allahu Akbar. And you leave the state of purity by saying, Salam. What an amazing people. What an amazing people we are. Masjid, a mosque, enables us to find that connection. Connecting with Allah. Allahu Akbar, you're the Lord of the universe. I worship you, Ya Allah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Show me the right path. Huh? You're, the, you're the only one I worship. And you're the only one I seek for help. Show me the right path. You ask Allah that. And you finish your prayer. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You don't do the entire salam, I know. But you're greeting the person next to you. Connecting to the person next to you after you had connected with Allah. Masjid is not a small thing. I'll tell you something else about masjid. When you stand next to somebody in prayers, guess what happens? Your heart is beating, right? Beep, beep, continuously. By the way, the person standing next to you, his or her heart is beating too, in their own space. Eventually, all your hearts start beating in the same rhythm and same sync. Allahu Akbar. Did you know that? When you're standing next to somebody, your heart will eventually sync with that person next to you. They've done this experiment by bringing hearts of people who have had an accident, put them together, they're beating randomly in different rates. After a while, they start beating together. Allah's miracle happens every day, five times a day in your masjid. Your heart is connected with your brother or with your sister or in your masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You need to thank Allah and you need to be very careful about the space that you have. It's a place of connection. Mosque is a place of worship, a place of solace for the restless soul to find, a pe to find peace and tranquility in their life. Brothers and sisters, our brain is very powerful, supremely powerful. I'm standing here, my brain is in extra gear, it, uh, it's functioning at Allah knows what speed, generating words after words after words. I'm not even in control of my brain, it's generating words and words. I don't know where they're coming from. They're just coming. It's called the power of the brain. Who has given that brain to us? Allah. You have no tongue? Who has given this brain to us? Come on, don't be shy. Allah has given this brain to us. Do you know why? You need to keep feeding your brain. Because if you don't, 
will get to a vegetative state. It won't work anymore. So you feed your brain by reading the Quran, reading books, intellectual conversations, stimulating discussions like today. You do lots of things to keep your brain fed. And you feed yourself with lots of food. Alhamdulillah, you've already had the first course. By the way, that was just a starter. Just in case you didn't know and you've eaten too much. There's more to come. You will be feeding your body with, mashallah, lots of food. But what do you feed your soul with? My brothers and sisters, what do you feed your soul with? A starving soul is a recipe for disaster. A starving soul is a recipe for misery, discontent, unhappiness, and all sorts of spiritual and emotional ailments that you can name or you may not be able to name. It's a terrible disaster for our psychological well-being, mental illnesses, and many other, because we've been starving our soul of food, and you feed your soul in the masjid five times a day. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar five times a day if you feed your soul five times a day you should not have mental breakdown you should not have troubles inside you should not have all those issues it's called feeding your soul your soul is no longer hungry mosque offers you a space and a solace for empty hungry soul a mosque is a place of education a place of education, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his education every day, in every prayer, in every moment of his living. He taught his companions from where? From his masjid. Please don't forget, from his masjid. Man and woman and children, they all learned from the beloved Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indiscriminately he taught them. The first word of Iqra that came to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not have a masjid at that time. But the soon, as soon as he could establish a masjid when he came, when he came to Medina, he was teaching them from the masjid. When he was in Mecca, Dar al-Arqam, Bilal al-Arqam was his home where he would teach them, he would give them instructions. He would teach them and he would give them instructions. Masjid is a place of learning, a place of not just ritual prayer, but you learn about everything. You learn science and technology in the masjid. You learn to have relationship with your friends and your families. You learn to behave. You learn your interpersonal skills. You learn to become a philosopher. You learn to learn the Quran and read the Quran. You learn logic and argumentation. You learn adab, akhlaq and manners. You learn every aspect of life in a masjid. That's why masjid is a place of learning. Not just a place of learning. But learning that will replace this earth from depth of ignorance to light. It will enlighten the world from the depth of darkness and give the light to the world. The light that will shine and the light that will remain permanent. The mosque will remain a beacon of hope for everybody. Brothers and sisters, the only alternative place you need to have is a palace in Jannah. As Rasulullah Sallam said, whoever builds a masjid for Allah, man bana lillahi masjidan, bana Allahu lahu baitan fil jannah. Whoever builds a house for Allah, Allah will build them a palace in paradise. And if you want a palace in paradise, here is your chance. Build a masjid in this country. Build your center for yourself and for the future of your children. For every person who walks by, for every car that drives by, for every plane that drives, uh, flies over and looks down and says, Aha, subhanallah, there's a masjid. Allahu Akbar for every person who remembers Allah because your money has built a masjid you have a palace awaiting for you in paradise join in join in this great effort and make your future in this country more permanent thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh